Hello, welcome to another Rahalastapa. This week we've got the fantastic Do The Right Thing podcast team. They are awesome. Uh, if you enjoy these podcasts, why not come and see us live? Go to richherring.com slash gigs and you can find out all about where you can see us. Edinburgh Fringe, London and all over the UK, basically. Uh, and also go to rahalastapa.co.uk for more information news and if you become a member secret news of guests before everyone else finds out plus backstage videos plus some of my stand-up shows all for three pounds a month uh, and badges and all sorts coming so you're going to enjoy it let's sit back relax and enjoy rahalastapa.co.uk with do the right thing Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. Please welcome a man who's, if his career lasts as long as Nicholas Parsons, has at least 44 more years to come. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> it's Richard Harry. <laughs> Thank you very much. I mean, Christ. God. The idea of doing another 44 years of this. <laughs> Oh dear. Anyway, welcome to the show. This podcast is called Richard Herring's Luke's Stupid Testament Podcast. It's, uh, it's all about how I don't particularly like the gospel according to St. Luke now. It's just <laughs> picking that apart. His genealogy of Christ is not as good as Matthew's. Goes back further, but you know, smacks are being made up. <laughs> Though I, I, was, um, I was talking to Crazy Frog the other day. I remember the crazy. <laughs> Crazy frog. Uh, uh, he calls it Rahalastapa. He doesn't, he doesn't go ding ding. That's just a, well, that's the character he plays. In real life, he's just a regular frog, normal guy. So uh, yeah, look, uh, let's let's meet some of the audience because I've got not, I've, I literally I've done you know I've done three podcasts already this week. Well, four. So I haven't got any fucking stand up material. I was scraping the bottom of the barrel with that wiggle stuff. Um, what's your name, madam? Anna, are you, are you new to the uh, the podcast front row? Yes. Uh, yeah. What do, what do you do for a living, Anna? Psychotherapist. You're a psychotherapist. <laughs> How's it going for me so far? Do you think <laughs> it's all right? How, how much does it cost to come to you to be therapised? Uh, Forty five pounds. That's nothing. <laughs> I'll give that a go. Can you cure me? I'm a, if you cured me, would I still be as funny as I am today? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Fuck. <laughs> We're not even that funny. And is this your, is this your friend? He's your very good friend. He's your husband to be. Yeah. Yeah, if you play your cards around me, don't mess it up. Uh, she's very lucky. I mean, you're a big man. You've got a nice beard. I'm just describing. You look a sort of like a young Stuart Lee in his fatter moments. <laughs> He's done all right. He's done okay. Yeah. Uh, what, do, what do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a photographer. You're a photographer. That's good, isn't it? Um, what's, what's your name? Uh, Andy. Ali. Andy. Oh, Andy, I was going to say. Ali's a stupid mate. <laughs> Andy, that's, that's fine. That's all right. What is the best thing you've ever photographed? It's hard, isn't it, to kind of just pick one out of all the many things. Is it your own cock? <laughs> is it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> you've got a long lens. OK. I don't, I don't know enough about cameras to know if that's you saying you've got a small cock or a big cock. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, lovely to meet you. Thank you for coming along. I hope you'll come back. Did you come along for Nicholas Parsons? Or, uh, yeah, was that the reason you came here? Yeah. No, it wasn't. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Why, did you, why did you come to this one, the first of all? Uh, we needed a Russian visa. You needed a Russian visa? I don't have those here, mate. That is not gonna, it's not going to work out. See me around the back. Uh, so it's... Um, <laughs> so told, don't say out loud. So... Thank you. Where are you going in Russia? Uh, Moscow. Moscow for, your, for your honeymoon. Bit of... But for your brother's wedding. Wow, he's stolen your thunder, hasn't he? Uh, so, must be furious. You're going to have to think of somewhere really great to get, get married now, mate. Uh, Andy, Ali Andy. You're going to have to beat Moscow. Yeah, where, where are you going to... Have you planned where you're going to... This is just for us. We won't put this in. Have you planned where you're going to get married? Yeah, we're going to get married in a uh, shed in the countryside. 
You're going to get married in a shed in the countryside. Good. I've got a shed, you can come there. Oh, okay, so... Right, this week's guest, there's three of them. They've worked together, but individually, they're best known for writing additional material in one episode of Not Going Out. That is what one of them is best known for. Uh, for filling in for me on the Collins and Herring Six Music Show. <laughs> and appearing on this podcast once before when we couldn't get a proper guest to turn up. someone who's best known for being the voice of a toilet on Things Talk is <laughs> Daniel Ward, Michael Legg and Margaret Caborn smith the Do The Right Thing podcast. Come in. Welcome. There's beers here. They've thought of everything. They've literally thought of everything. I said um, I was mocked for joining in with the Rahel Estefan yeah. at that stage. I'm just very obedient. I noticed they didn't say it for me, though. Did they not? No, they're, no. they're, they're, they're weak, this audience. They're not, <laughs> they're not as good as last week's no. audience, who are excellent. <laughs> so, um, hang yeah. on. Uh, you got off with Spike, Spike from, from Buffy. Buffy. This is what we just discovered backstage. Uh, yes. Yes. Why have you never told us this? I thought I had. This is like my best anecdote. Spike from what? You Buffy. know, Buffy the Vampire oh, okay. Slayer. I once got off with Spike. He's, is he a nice looking gentleman? Yeah, I think he's pretty he good. Was, yeah. He was. See, the blonde one. Buff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, yeah. But not. It's buffish. How, How far hair. did you get? Just tongues. Okay. <laughs> tongues on what other bit? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I went. <laughs> Oh my god, that would be a great story. I uh, I went to see his band at the Scala years oh. and years and years ago, and they were terrible. Um, I think they like I I don't think I don't, they had a song that went, "I am German, you are Jewish. There can be no <laughs> love between us." <laughs> no, I mean that doesn't even rhyme. Fucking hell! I absolutely regret bringing up Spike from Buffy. <laughs> Fuck yeah, now. At least we wrecked his career, though, if he had, if he had one. <laughs> yeah. It's it his work, like it's not your work. It. Yeah. Yeah. Well, nothing to do with me. Yeah. And, um, but that would turn you on enough to snog yeah. him. <laughs> Just to shut him up. <laughs> and so uh, I got into the after show party, yeah. and I was there with my friend Katie, and she said to him, Oh, we really, really like Buffy. Can I have a snog? And so he got off with her. And then I went, well, can I have one too? And then he got off with me. Oh, that must so be great being really Spike from good. Buffy, wasn't it? That was, that was his whole life. You know, yeah, OK, I'll do it. If you insist. You must have had that, though, in the 90s. Yeah, as often Stu was kissing girls and they're going, what about me? Uh, Stu would kiss me. Wank me off with a ventriloquist. I mean... A true story. Yes. Why would I lie about that? No, I mean, how could you make that up? He didn't actually wank him off. Not fully. No. Just, See, no. The hand was too small. <laughs> so it was very little. Hand that, that is. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I didn't see. I, I haven't heard last week's show yet. Okay. Um, but did you ask Nicholas Parsons like when was the last time he had a wank? <laughs> because I couldn't help thinking like it's got to be a while, right? It has to stop. It has to stop, Richard! <laughs> Tell me it stops! You, sure. you could stop. No, I yeah. can't! <laughs> you could stop doing it now. <laughs> yeah. The fact that everyone's <laughs> looking is begging me on. <laughs> it was amazing. You know, that's the thing. You've got to now follow Nicholas Parsons, admittedly a week to the later. grave. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, everyone he's worked with is, is dead. Yeah, yeah. he's going to yeah. outlive us. So it's you next. Yeah, I'm terrified. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad because I just can't, you know, imagine having to keep working until you're 95. Awful. And I would have to, that's the thing. If I live that long, I'm still working. I'm still doing this, even if it's just you turning up, which it will be. <laughs> just be him, yeah. But just be him. He'll be there. <laughs> if he's old, but no, actually, if I get to 95, you're, you're dead, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no offence. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, so what do you remember about... First of all, writing additional material for uh, Not Going Out, the party <clears throat> episode, I believe. I did not write additional material for that episode. What happened was I was asked by Avalon to submit some ideas for, a, uh, a, for Not Going Out as a series. Yeah. And I submitted these ideas. And then suddenly, one of the ideas I submitted is an episode of Not Going Out. Didn't get paid, but I did get that credit. Wow, I've mm. opened a can of worms. I had no <laughs> idea. 
The last time, last time I asked you, you'd got, you, you only got a credit because you, you were sleeping with one of the writers and that gave them an idea. That was TV's burp, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was your other best That was before. one of the best thing, yeah. Michael Legg, how was yeah. it filling in for me on, I never listened to it, on the Collins and Herring? It, it was um, one, of, one of the best experiences that I've ever had of basically feeling like I was waiting for a bus. <laughs> I just to, sat there and uh, nothing happened and then nothing <laughs> happened again and again. And then fucking stereophonics played. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, Andrew's nice and all that, but yeah. I mean, I had nothing to do. <laughs> and do you know, the first thing that I was told is, oh yeah, do you know what, Richard used to just come in and he'd constantly be on his phone, like looking at Twitter and I thought, well, I'm never going to be that unprofessional, but I've never been that fucking bored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Were There's you that bored do. doing the Dave Gorman show? Yeah, <laughs> I mean a little bit. Yeah, it was quite boring, wasn't it? Oh. I mean, I mean, again, it was all right, but it's, it's boring just sitting there, isn't it? Is this, I mean, which is, is what this we're why doing the right constant now. Constant wanking. <laughs> problem. Why do you think it's a problem? <laughs> I'm not doing it now, just... and I have not had one fucking thank you. <laughs> What about being a toilet on uh, Things Talk? I, um, that, that was actually a good job. That, was was, that Things Talk was written by Stefan Goloszewski, right. who wrote Mum and Him and Her. And you so, yes, toilet. I was in the failed project <laughs> of Stefan Goloszewski. Um, yeah, and then that was, yeah, it was an animated, like things in the house that were animated. Okay. And Leslie Phillips played a clock, and all they wanted him to say was Tick Tock, <laughs> right? And he just kept going Tick Tock. <laughs> tick, tick tock and they kept trying to say can you just do it and they couldn't quite bring themselves to say can you just do do it like your catchphrase yeah. and they just didn't and they just abandoned it as an idea Aww. and as he left he went tick tock <laughs> <laughs> yeah I didn't have a clue but um uh, were you annoyed when you get on a virgin train and hear that other woman pretending to be the toilet on the virgin trains <laughs> yes yeah unless yeah, it is I you as well myself. no I wish it was yeah. Uh, no, I very much see myself as a... You've seen those toilets on Virgin Trains? We go, hello, I'm a toilet. I used to be in a public toilet. This is much better. Yeah, I mean... No, I really like going in the toilet if I've got diarrhoea. Because just the idea, they go, hello, I'm a toilet. I'm going, good. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hope my guts come out at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Michael's ang angry. That's, that's, his, that's his role in the podcast. So let's talk about uh, Do the Right Thing, because that's why you're all here together, which is a fantastic panel show. Not as good as Just a Minute. Uh, <laughs> on, uh, How that goes out dare as a, you? There's a podcast. Nicholas Parsons didn't understand what podcasts were. He didn't realise this was a podcast until he got here. And then he said, how do people find what you're done? How do people find what you're doing on the, on the internet? Well, I, I go around to their house. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and insist myself upon them. Yeah. <laughs> well, it sort of is that. What yeah. is the premise? I've been on Do the Right Thing, so I know, and I've been listening to it all week. Mm. Uh, it's very good. But for the people at home who may not have heard of it, what is it and how does it work? It is a panel show where I ask uh, Michael and Margaret and two other people, um, uh, what is the right thing to do according to our source material? Which, if you're trying to steal the format, is one of the important points. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's very funny. And yeah. the, the, how many series you've done? Quite a lot of uh, series now. I, I don't no really idea. understand how a podcast series works. No. Yeah. Well, Surely just, you, you just decide. fucking re no one's. How many episodes? No one's have making done? us record it. Yeah. We've done about fifty. I was going to oh, say, say ben, this is, uh, I should we say fifty. Fucking hell. My producer Ben is on that podcast he's the producer of, and co-creator of that podcast mm. and he chips in like that that was people who like the podcast were very excited about that how do you find working with Ben because I, I find it quite difficult oh <laughs> what do you think about him don't ever take a phone call from him and then make him put it in email because otherwise he goes on for ages he, he uses up a lot of data <laughs> <laughs> which is always good with a producer for a podcast well I think he's an absolute cunt and if he... <laughs> now listen, if he edits this out, then that proves he can fucking edit. And why haven't you read it and do the right thing? <laughs> Cunt. <laughs> Honestly, if that's not in... Yeah, it will That'll be in. That'll be in. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say something libelous about him, like what he gets up to with Prince Andrew. But yeah. he's, <laughs> so far, that is... Yeah. 
Have you so seen far, a... that has kept under the radar. Ben and Prince Andrew have been. F- <laughs> that'll yeah. get cut out. That's all right. That'll get in. But they have been. Well, <laughs> None of this is going out. No. So it's with, <laughs> it's screwed. Uh, it's well, no, because I, I said to you backstage, I listened to the pilot episode. I was, I was listening to the recent episodes. I thought I'll go back and listen to how this thing started, which is interesting because it's become it's it's come a long way. I have to say it was it was good. It was good. It's very kind. It of was you. good the first episode, but it's way way better now. Well, um, I've never, I've literally never listened to an episode of it right. ever. Um, but I'm saving it for a terminal illness. <laughs> yes. It'd be really nice as I lay dying in a hospital. Go, well, if you oh. forget everything, then you can listen back to that and then, A, you won't remember it was you and you might find it funny and B, yeah. you know, might remind you of your previous life. Yeah. Um, but um, I think, like I was saying to you, the thing about being able to do a podcast is, like, the first series was ropey, uh, but we were sort of finding our feet. But if that had been... So we, me and Ben, I don't know if I said this last time, me and Ben got offered... £10,000, a comedian offered us £10,000 to buy the format of Do the Right Thing to sell to ITV Comedy. And we, the part of the reason we, t- we said no is because we knew we'd get one series and the first series would be difficult. And yeah. so you need the time to work these things out, I think. Yeah, it, well, definitely. I mean, even Nicholas Parsons, who's great, uh, my sure. mate, he's my mate, uh, he was saying how the pilot of Just a Minute was terrible, like really, really bad, which Do the Right Thing is not terrible, it's just different. Yeah. It's just very different. But also because now you've really established the characters. I mean, it must have been hard having, like, two women on, the, on, a, on a panel show. I find it must have taken a long time to work out how to make that Yeah, no, work. it's a nightmare. And yeah. our, our boobs keep bumping into each other. <laughs> and... Everything is very tidy, though. Is it, yeah? Really nice. Thankfully, <laughs> we've clean. now established Catholic asshole IRA. <laughs> it's like the Spice Girls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But that's yeah, also my IRA yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. Literally anything to get rid of the veganism. Yeah. The IRA will get rid of the fucking veganism. <laughs> Don't you fucking worry. And they're coming back. <laughs> Thanks to us. Thanks hey. to us. It's coming home. It's coming home. It's coming home. Come on. Well, it's interesting. We're calling it, we, when this series started, it is an interesting point that I did mean to discuss. Um, we assumed we were leaving the EU, the United Kingdom were leaving the EU on the uh-huh. 29th of March, which is in four days. Yeah. I'm still not sure whether we will have. By the, my next show's on the 1st of April. I'm not sure if we're going to be in the EU or not. It's quite interesting. Extension. People at home might know. Oh. Yeah. Oh, but if it, right, we, might just go, we might just go for a notice. There's still a chance we could leave on the 29th of uh, March. Oh, yeah. they've got. A... At the moment, as we, that's amazing, isn't it? I mean, next week we'll know. Can we bit. ask them? Yeah, we can. Yeah. I think the people at home listen to this in 2027. I Probably just don't know yet. Nicholas Parsons isn't alive to see that. <laughs> Four days. <laughs> well, me too, because it would know, be great if he goes before my yeah, podcast comes really... out. It'd be really good. Yeah. It's been good for the podcast. Yeah. I had the goodies on. I thought, well, one of them's going to go. Surely. <laughs> got, Barry, got Barry Cry coming up in about three months. Thinking, is it a mistake to book him so early? I'm here. Yeah, you're here. You're the oldest man from Northern Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, no, they keep going, don't they? They keep going. I think they'll live forever. And prove me wrong. Um, <laughs> so you did try and do, uh, do the right thing on TV. Yeah, we did try. We yeah. tried. Yeah. 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 We gave it a go. I the mean, camera wasn't on. So we, not, uh... they, they forgot to put the film in. What? We've never really discussed this, have, what went have wrong? we, as a, group? as a group? Not really. What were the changes they made when they took it to the TV? They tried to make it look nice. <laughs> and not all of us look nice, Richard. No. Margaret you know looks did? like a fucking pile of shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know Whereas I look beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> they are beautiful. Do you know what they did? They, um, they made me sit really far away from everybody else. Right. Which was really so great. <laughs> yeah, it was great <laughs> for us. Look, so Claudia was in the middle, and then they made me sit like off, off, almost not on camera. Yeah, like Claudia s- Winkleman was in it. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And, and uh, so, what? How, what role did Claudia Winkleman play? She's the host. And then what? But you're the host. So what did yeah, you become? Yeah. So I was just. She was Richard Osman. Right. Yeah. Well, that was sort of the idea. Jerry Adams played oh. part of me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was amazing. <laughs> Love that guy. Do you know the thing that made like? I 
think it's because, right, the do the right thing's always... The reason it's really great is because we're all on it. Yeah. <clears throat> what we found is, whenever we pitched it like, oh, so we're on it, all TV people would go, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> like, the thing is, we are not famous enough to be on a thing. So To be on our own thing. To be yeah. on our own thing, yeah. yeah. That's so the embarrassing it, thing. It'd always be like, oh, we could buy it. It's a really good format. But if we buy it, they've got to be on it, and we don't like them. <laughs> so unless they sort of engineered a plane crash and it mm. could be a tribute to us, it would have been very difficult. Yeah, but... you've got like, a fan base who, who then watch it and go, oh, it's not, it's not what I wanted. No, but what's good about it is the three of you and the, you, the fantastic guests you have, like me... Yeah. I've been on it. I was very good, and I'm yeah. coming on it again. Uh, it's, uh, you know, so that's that's the point of it. And the relationship between the three of you, which definitely grows over those series, but that's you know, but never mind the buzzcocks when that started. None of those guys were famous. That's what people don't really understand. None of those guys were massively famous. They, that show made all those guys yeah. famous enough to have to not be on it anymore. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, because uh, to be honest, I don't think any format is that amazing. No, you know, without without the people on it that. There was, um, there was a show called Bring Me the Head of Light Entertainment back in, uh, yeah, in the 90s, and Graham Norton, I think, was the host. And, um, uh, and they thought... Well, I don't know, I think that they thought that was a brilliant thing, and it wasn't. It was just Graham Norton was brilliant, and as yeah. soon as he, they lost him, it wasn't any good. I mean, I'm yeah. only half remembering this story, so it's not, not a great story. <laughs> but, I, but, I, but I do think people get... Yeah. Um, and the idea... And it used to be that sitcoms didn't have to have mega stars in them yeah. it would be like Richard Bryars who was sort of famous and then all the others were from theatre and they became famous because everyone then associates the characters you know they, they're not going oh look there's yeah. Idris Elba they're um, <laughs> they're go- he's not here he's not Damn, here. Um, I'm not Idris going, Elba he's the, he's the, oh that's that character that I'm learning yeah, to, yeah. Like, like The Office you know yeah. That wouldn't have worked if it was... Um... Idris Elba is in The Office, though, so you have fucked that one oh, up. Oh, God. I know he is. American, <laughs> yeah. American Office. Yeah. Very, very late in the rubbish ones. I know. That, that's I... what I was referring to. I know what fucking <laughs> reference I was doing. <laughs> Don't fucking Twitter me. But do you, like, do you find this? Like, you... you write stuff, right? So I do. When I write things, you kind of... <laughs> You say, oh, I've got this idea. It would be really great to cast really great people. And then, especially if it's the BBC, they go, oh, can you put this fucking stand-up cunt in it? Yeah, they do say that, yeah. They do. <laughs> <laughs> they don't give them names. They just point to the list they have. But, you know, well, we've said, I mean, I've said this a lot on the show. It never, you know, like the point you're making is the office was successful without any names and then the people become names. And people who choose TV programmes don't understand that's how TV works. Yeah. They want to kind of go to a shortcut that is, is a stupid shortcut. But I think with your uh, show, fuck TV. Who needs TV? You like your you will get more listeners with a, as a podcast than you would viewers as a TV show, D- unless you got on BBC One with it straight away. Mm. So you know you and would... we're not, we weren't allowed to drink either, like, right? Uh, officially, and that was yeah. Do you know the thing that I found really found really weird is so the thing that I love about do the right thing is that I know that we can take the conversation to places that you. Like, I, I try and open up the conversation as much as possible as host. And when we did the TV pilot, we got into a, the area, I think it was like the Jimmy Savile thing. We, we touched upon paedophilia. We touched upon, yeah, touched Jimmy. touched upon paedophilia. <laughs> and I could hear the line producer saying, shut it down, it will never make the edit. <laughs> and it's like, you know, I want to be able to, I think... Why we'll... silence Jimmy Savile now? <laughs> <laughs> Too late. I think... Because part of the problem is when, when you're when you're trying when you're doing a TV panel show, you're so aware of what's going to make the edit. You censor yourself, and yeah. you know that they don't want you to talk about it. With do the right thing, we just we just make it as fun as possible, and then if stuff has to get cut out, it gets cut out. So, so I'd, I'd I'd like to say last night we did a do the right thing recording with um, uh, Joe Lysett, and he told an extraordinary story, and I can say this to this audience, because <laughs> it's your audience. Yes. Um, he didn't feel able to say it last night, but he, he basically alluded it to it. But there's um, a, a nightclub in Birmingham with a dark room that you go in there and basically, it's a dark room, you don't know who you, okay. you're fucking, Dancing basically. with, oh, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> dancing, yeah, let's call it dancing. Cheek and, to cheek. <laughs> and basically, Joe, there was a story about a, a guy who'd gone in and had basically afterwards discovered that he'd fumbled with his dad. Yeah. 
Now, afterwards, Joe said what I didn't say, because it didn't feel right in Birmingham Town Hall. He sucked him off. Yeah, yes. And what Danielle then said... I'm sorry, but that is just was, manners. <laughs> <laughs> what Danielle then said was, and I quote, I'd like to think I'd be able to sniff my dad out. <laughs> <laughs> how did they find out how did it become apparent that it had happened afterwards that they were leaving together and yeah I don't know is he tasted his own DNA yeah, yeah. <laughs> bit me-ish <laughs> you can't put that in my podcast either. that's disgrace that's disgrace that has to be that's coming right out you really don't think you could Sniff my dad out. <laughs> no, I don't know why. But then again, late night Channel 4, I can see it working. <laughs> Paddy McGuinness, what a laugh. I didn't mean sniff his cock, I just meant his general scent. <laughs> Would you sniff someone all over before you plated yes. them just to be on there if it was in the yeah, dark? Yeah, that is I mean, what it sounds like like, yeah. like she's no, snuffling what does for trouble. What does smell of? Like rolled tobacco or something? <laughs> it's just like people have scents and you can... Sweets. <laughs> like, no? People smell of things and you meet someone you're like, oh, that scent is very... I think this I'm is not very the only much a, this is just you. <laughs> you're not the only person that knows what your dad smells like. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds worse than I meant it to. <laughs> But anyway, I think I, you know, I think the it's better for you to do it. It's a better show for you all to do it, and it's a better show for you to do it on your own. And then you can talk about things like that if you want to. Yeah, I mean, it, like it, it, it truly is a better show for not being on telly. But also, we don't earn any money, but, which makes a big difference. I think. Nah, but money's for fools. Yeah, it is for Eddie's. But I wish that um, we could somehow have the pilot so that we could sell it just for a fucking laugh, so you can see what we would be like doing do the right thing in church <laughs> we just, we, it, honestly it was like we were playing the part of ourselves it was weird yeah we like it, it was more like a sort of take that concert they the made it look for. really good yeah and we like it yeah. so disgusting and grimy it was so bright the lights were so bright that's the only good thing i can say but the lights were so bright that it took like 10 weeks off me <laughs> <laughs> maybe <laughs> Well, I think you can put. You should be able to put it out. Have you not got a copy of it? Can you put it out online? I don't think we're allowed to. You're not allowed to. No, it's yeah, only but it's the internet. Fuck them. Yeah. It's the Wild West. Someone you can say whatever you like about computer. Prince Andrew, and it can't be beeped. No. <laughs> a man hacked my computer, and now it's online. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. It's not that good. Okay. I mean, it's, it's totally no, but that, that, that's that. Is it? There we right. go. It was good. It was good. I, mean, it was I think it was good. Do you know what? It's good compared to a normal TV panel Stop it. Thank show. you. Oh. There oh, you go. Oh, thank you. That's really Do you think nice. Claudia Winkerman should do the podcast version as well? No. No. <laughs> she was lovely. She was yeah. lovely. She was, yeah. She was Isn't her nice. hair amazing? <laughs> you still think Jerry Adams Incredible. should stay in it though, right? Yeah. <laughs> he was really lovely, wasn't he? <laughs> and actually, a real laugh backstage. <laughs> It's a very uh, educational show, though, I think, as well. That's the, the <gasps> We learn so much. We do. It's, it's incredible. So you, you're trying to saw... I mean, I think when I was on... All I remember is I had to uh, come up with ways of stopping someone having an erection or something like that, which I knew you about. You did, I yeah. Did, yeah. I knew about... <laughs> you knew Beat too much. Hammer. <laughs> I did. You have to hit it with a pencil. Sure. <laughs> I know a lot about it. And now, you know, you're listening and thinking, oh, I could have told you about that particular thing as I'm yeah. walking my dog and thinking about it. So there's, there's, what's the best expert you've had on, do you think? I can't stop thinking about really hot women hitting my penis with a pencil. <laughs> Put well, it away. It would we, make you, you flash. We have done a mini tour this week and we were in York and our expert was a Viking expert. Oh, yeah. But he was the perfect balance. He wasn't trying to be funny and he was really, but he really knew his stuff and he was like, I'm going to, give you some information about Vikings. And he was if great, wasn't he? kills me. Yeah, he was, he was great. Him, him and the fly lady. Does he work at the Jorvik Viking Centre? He, he does. Obviously yeah. he does. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's great there. Yeah. Um, John no, Ronson was a... Was he? Was a... Was he an um, expert? Yeah. What was he an expert Psych on? Psychopaths. Oh. That was really good. Yeah, yeah it's not... He said I was one. <laughs> <laughs> really? 
It's ridiculous. He said psychopaths have got such a strong work ethic, and also I think Michael's one. Went, Hang on, those two things don't. <laughs> they're so far apart. What the fuck are you talking about? Also, we've had Matt Osman from Suede on. That hasn't yes. gone out yet, and he was my favourite expert. The, the only trouble with having Matt Osman from Suede on is that we're all we were all a bit in awe of, of him, and so because we he's Richard Osman's sort of, brother, right? Yeah, exactly. So that is, yeah, that's exactly. what's exciting about him. Surely, your second favourite. What about oh. the bloke you tried to shut? <laughs> <laughs> I got really drunk and flirted so badly with Rick Smadder, our uh, gas. He's not in, is he? You're not in, Rick. I think I heard that one. Is that quite a recent one? Yeah. Mm. It was nice, it was sweet. Mm. Been in a relationship for eight years. (laughs) (laughs) Try not to record it if you're going to be unfaithful. That's why that's. Well, if you record, you can record it, but don't put it out out on the internet. Well, you know, we've got Ben. We didn't think anyone would. (laughs) I'm going to ask you some emergency questions. We had some fun backstage with these. I think it's, this is a, this would be a good uh, thing for your quiz show. You could put some of these oh, in. Oh yeah, I could do that. <laughs> or, or my Radio Four show, which is ba- basically that. Yeah, you just copied me, haven't you? Copied I, you before you did it. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Uh, if you had to bum, this was not on your Radio <laughs> Four show. Either with your genitals or a dildo. <laughs> one of the main characters in the TV show Red Dwarf. If you question. had to, who would you bum and would you, <laughs> and would you use your genitals or a dildo? And remember, it's the character, not the actor, that you are bumming. It's with re- I find I honestly find it really hard to bum people with my genitals. Yeah, that's it's why really you yeah. tricky. Okay, so maybe you'd go for a strap-on dildo. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I used to have uh, quite. I thought you were say, I used to have no. a strap-on I, dildo. I, I, I used to, to get I used excited. To have, I, when I was like 14, I had all the Red Dwarf magazines okay. and I used to cut the back page out and put it on a wall and I was very strongly sexually attracted to Chris Barry slash really? Rimmer. Yeah, oh my God. As Rimmer. As Rimmer. I really fancied Rimmer. Rimmer and Christopher Reeve's Superman were my two, <laughs> two favourites. And I used to imagine lying on a sofa. <laughs> Just that. Careful. With either or of them making <laughs> love to me. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. On the sofa. <laughs> you couldn't even imagine a bed. <laughs> so Watch the telly, won't you? Sexier, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I would definitely bum Rimmer. Rimmer. As a hologram or as a human? Oh, as a hologram. He grew as a character as a hologram. Yeah. It really upset me that they reset his character. They, they, the character of Rimmer grows so brilliantly over the first seven series and then series eight. They undo all that, so. I agree. It goes off the boil. Goes off the boil. About that bit, it starts. I'm going to come to you. Don't think you're out Don't of this. Don't worry. Uh, I knew you haven't given an answer. Um, it starts quite badly. The thing I don't like about Red Dwarf, uh, and this is also true a little bit of the Orville, which I do like, uh, is there's a lot of references to the time that the show is made rather than in the future. So the Red Dwarf, all the punchlines are things from the 1980s, which I don't think in whatever year it is anyone would give a fuck about. And it would be a better show now if they hadn't done that as well because we don't remember any of the fucking shit they're talking about. <laughs> Claire Grogan is the one I'd go for. It's what's... what's, um, what's Not a main character. She and is. also she's... Not a main character. Uh, the actress. Yeah. What's her character <laughs> Kachansky. name? Kachansky. Kachansky. But I, halfway through I go, this is... I don't care about oh, the character. Oh, I'd really... <laughs> I really Start want as to the character and now it's you, Claire. I really want <laughs> to bomb <birthday>. Mark Williams. <laughs> I tried to get off with Claire Grogan at a party in Edinburgh once. She was very sweet. What did she say? Well, no, fuck off. No. <laughs> that Sounds is sweet. Really I am, sweet. I'm really married. <laughs> Who's the most famous person you've tried to get off with? Um, well, I Mine mean, when you say like tried, <laughs> I mean, does that mean tried and succeeded? No, tried okay. and failed. Tried. tried and failed is more fun. Uh, oh, I've got a brilliant one. It might be Claire Grogan. I bought Carol Decker from De Pau a drink once, and yeah. she didn't even sleep with me. <laughs> <laughs> right? Did, she, did you try to get off with her? Yeah. I didn't buy. I didn't buy Claire Grogan a drink. I mean, there must be more than that. I just I can't remember. Give me some time, and I will come back with a lot, <laughs> a lot of failed. <laughs> there was a girl who used to be in uh, an advert, loads of adverts. Uh, called Rachel, and she was... Um, the advert's called Rachel. Yeah. I think she's in one for Britas Filters. 
And I wrote, I wrote about her in The Guardian, about fancying this woman from all these adverts. You do that all the time. Yeah, yeah. And, then she, uh, and then she came to Edinburgh. And then I got a note in my picture. And I said, oh, it's me, Rachel. Blah, blah, blah. And I went up to her and said, oh, hi, it's me. And she just looked at me like she didn't know who I was. So I think someone had put like that note in my pigeonhole <laughs> so that I'd go and go, hey, it's me. I want to go out. It's, it's ironic because you've got no filter. <laughs> Trying to think of any other famous people. I mean, I, you know, I just, we just, I just had sex with them all. Didn't, really, yeah. didn't try, they just came on to me. Who's yours? Famous uh, yeah. person to get off with. It's probably Spike from Buffalo. No, yeah. that you tried to get off with and failed. I have tried to get off with anybody famous. Not. Mm. Oh, do you know what the bass player from 60 Foot Dolls? When I was 17, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he tried to invite me back to his hotel room, but I was a virgin, so I was really scared. I Aww. hadn't shaved my legs. Oh. Yeah. It's bloody virgins. I had, a, <laughs> <laughs> I had a bad bra on. So Did I, you lose your virginity when you were 22 years 22 old? 22 years That's old, That's yeah. quite astonishing. Mm. Really? Yes. I was I 21. Were you? That's less astonishing, yeah, thanks. Makes sense. <laughs> One year less Fucking astonishing. Rude. How, how old were you when you lost your virginity? Seventeen in That's a car park. <laughs> in a car park in Newtonards. I was Fucking ninety. Depressing. I was nearly twenty. So we've nearly got it covered. Yeah, it's bad. How did you get to twenty-two? I'm twenty-one. New. I understand. How did you get to twenty-two? You're clearly a slut. Once you got to twenty-two, though, you might start, you know you think, well, I'm never going to do it. How did you? How did you, how you overcome? the fact that you hadn't done it yet and then do it. And why did it take you till you were 22? Well, because, uh, A, like... Is it, is it a tragic story? Genuinely, no one okay. fancied me. Or if they did, Bad I bras, not bad, shaving your legs. Bad bras, not shaving my legs. Uh, podgy. Um, me, 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 me also. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, Had me. never touched a willy other than my dad. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sniff it out. <laughs> Pleased that I'd seen my dad's willy before I saw. What? Because, well, <laughs> um, like in, you know, my I've, I've been in the bathroom when my dad was in the bath. Sure. And I'd seen it. And, <laughs> That's fine and, then. Uh, That's not that weird, is it? No, I saw my dad's. Yeah. Just wandering around. I yeah. saw your dad's as well. <laughs> That's not weird at all. Um, but I and. I was appalled, don't get me wrong, but it, but it was a relief when I then Small. saw one of somebody I was trying to, you know, that I fancied and, you know, that it might, <laughs> might be used. <laughs> Weird phrase, but you know what I mean. Because they're, they're horrific. They're horrific. They are horrible. So, so it's really good to have kind of gone, okay, that's what that's, what that's like. Yeah. On an old man in, in imagine, the bath. Imagine if you'd never seen one before, and then it's just presented in front of you. Yeah. I don't know what you. It's a wonderful gift. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like when you know when cats bring dead birds. To yeah. you. <laughs> you know really? What, don't you see it? <laughs> it's a lovely gift for the family. <laughs> Too much skin. <laughs> Just look at it going. There's too. I don't know why it's there got so much skin. There needs to be some, so that has something to grow into. Well, no, but it's, exactly. If you've it's never seen an erect when it's, one, you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the erect ones are better. Well, yeah. not always. Not if you've got to live with it. <laughs> not if it's always erect. It's kind of good that it got, you know, telescopes. Down. Whoever invented it really thought it through. It's it's good. <laughs> it's good that it comes down most of the time, just for weeing mainly. Yeah. Mainly. Yeah, mainly for wee. <laughs> Imagine you have to wee with an erection all the time. It'd be very difficult. You can just, like, force it down? <laughs> <laughs> Not these days. <laughs> <laughs> no, also, if you, you know, if you want me to come on as a penis expert and do the right thing, you, there's a thing that shuts off the, uh, there's a thing that shuts off uh, your urine when you have an erection so that you urine out because your urine would be a spermicide so you can't you sort of can we we've got an erection but it's much harder oh like a train track yeah, yeah. flip the lane <laughs> can you have you ever tried to wee with an erection like, Michael I mean, pretty much every morning what yeah. the fuck are you talking about <laughs> 
Yes. Well, it's impossible. Go. If you can do it, there's something deeply wrong. Oh, Shit, dear. there must be. I'm absolutely terrified. Your sperm now. have all been killed by urine. Oh, I've no, got no problem with that. Okay. I don't want that going anywhere. No, none of us do. None of us no. do. <laughs> <laughs> um, good question. Did you give an answer to the, which Red, Reef, Red Dwarf crack you'd like to bum, Michael? I'd oh, like to um, well, uh, as a, a keen animal lover... Yeah. I'll go for Holly. Okay. <laughs> As uh, Norman Love it. Norman, okay. yeah. yeah. I'll be filming it. Nice <laughs> and slow, keeping it low. You have to do his mouth. No, yeah, bumming. I'm going to bump That's his mouth. Specifically bumming. <laughs> Listen to the question. The character of Holly in Red Dwarf does not have a bum. It might, it might do somewhere down there. Yeah. You don't know science. It might be a bum on the back of her uh, head. Not no, that's the worst no, thing. It's not canon. That woman has sat through you talking about sucking your dad's cocks. And it was only when you put a bum on the back of someone's yes, head that went, but... No! No! What madness is this? I have a bum on her head. They're only a head. I, they must never defecate. In the neck hole. That's how you do. That's, that counts as... <laughs> sure. That counts as bumming. Do you think you would have made a good sheriff in the Wild West? <laughs> Uh, I don't think there's anything I'd be worse at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they, they don't like um, diplomacy and sort of cowardice, do they? No. No, well, those are my two okay. things. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would have done because I am a woman that is fuelled by vengeance. Yeah, I was going to yes. say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Danielle is, um, uh, yeah, she's a keen bridge burner. Yes. I would, I yeah. would say that. It's something I love about her. Yeah. <laughs> do you think you've been a good sheriff? No, and I'm scared of Danielle. <laughs> Dan, if there was a sheriff that do the right thing it would be you then yeah I mean you sort of are also I am from Nottingham yes famously home of the sheriffs yeah, the sheriff of Nottingham yeah. of the, the evil terrible sheriffs, terrible sheriffs. <laughs> it's the home of the worst sheriff the worst <laughs> sheriff ever you, could, you wouldn't be the worst sheriff of Nottingham and the, not, the tales of Robin Hood is better than the Jorvik Centre it's the same no. idea. No, it used to be. It's shut down I know now. it's shut down. Yeah. So I, believe me, I've talked about this a lot. Oh, wait. Right. And if anyone comes from Nottingham, I give them a right earful. <laughs> what, like for to, not going enough? For, yeah, for not going enough to their <laughs> to own. To keep if I lived in Nottingham when that was on, I'd have been there every fucking so day. It didn't smell of anything. Like Did? There was some smell of poo No, in there. the thing that we found out from the Yorvik <laughs> Viking man was when they dug up the bones of Vikings... There was a distinct smell that came out of the floor. Mm. Danielle's dad's cock. <laughs> <laughs> and they used that smell to permeate the Jorvik Viking Centre. Whereas if you go to the Robin Hood Tales, what smell? It smells of Tesco's now, doesn't it? Yeah, it does that. Oh, yeah. Of Tesco's. There was no amazing smell. You didn't... Like, this is what I mean. Scent. Scent is very strong for the memory. This is how I could tell my dad in a dark room in a gay club. <laughs> It's because... Not it's memory of, the, of, your, of your Viking times. <laughs> oh, I remember now when I was a Viking skeleton. <laughs> Thanks for digging that one up for me. Yeah. I remember when I did a poo in Viking times. Whoa. As a youth visiting yeah. Robin Hood tales... Uh, tales of Robin Hood, get it <laughs> right. <laughs> tales of Robin Hood. There was no strong smell. Yeah. So I can't sign the petition. <laughs> It's so is that what you say on all of your guest books when you leave? This place didn't smell at all. I will not be returning. <laughs> you know what? If there's a really good smell, I'm more inclined to support the... No one knows what Robin Hood's poo smelled like because he's a fictional character. Well, maybe that's their problem. Yeah. There was one in Oxford called The Oxford Story. So I just like going around on mechanised things around a, a thing with bad dummies on it. That's what I like. And I think Nottingham one was best. The people here, I've lost them. <laughs> lost them they're not interested in, in that that's what's wrong with the young people today <laughs> alright have you ever been on a plane that's been in an emergency and seen a genuine look of fear on the face of a flight attendant I have yeah have I had, um, uh, the first time I ever went on easy jets I had a really I mean the, it, it, it started I said it opened that, that, that's not how it happened how things happen. The, um, the, the flight attendant got on and he was about to do um, his, you know, his little safety Dance. thing. Dance. And the pilot said, and today asked our flight attendants are Amanda and Gloria. And we were looking at this man and he was going, ah! <laughs> and 
was like, I find it funny that the pilot doesn't know who's on his plane. <laughs> this is this man. And, um, and then, yeah, it was pretty much flying through a thunderstorm for half an hour. And, you know, they always say, look at the flight attendant's yeah. faces. And they just both looked just shit scared <laughs> for half an hour and were strapped in. <laughs> just like that. It's yeah. horrible. Do you think they'd have training to stop them doing I mean, I've seen Not it. Not on EasyJet, I've, I've had it as well. <laughs> Um, when you can tell. But, yeah, I guess you can't... When you think you're going to die, you can't hide that fear. Mm. I went to uh, Orlando, Florida, because I'm oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, it's nice. And uh, when the plane landed, I was asleep, completely asleep, like, for about six hours on the flight. I was that cosily drunk. <laughs> and when I woke up, when the plane landed, I was like, oh, brilliant, we're here. I missed the whole thing. What a brilliant way to fly by not really experiencing anything. And... Everyone around me was crying and hugging <laughs> one another. When, honest, I know what, what happened. No, it, it, we just thought we were going to crash. I mean, everyone, and I was like, I missed this. <laughs> I missed this incredible bonding sensation that the entire flight. Oh, for fuck's sake! Do you know that probably would have made you more ambitious? Yeah, staring, good. Staring face in the death, you probably would have. Staring face in the staring death in the face would probably have made you go. Face death every <laughs> freaking day. Will he look at me? No, what a chicken. <laughs> Pussy. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> They've gone crazy. Margaret, you, why are you working with these two? Because you've done loads of really good stuff. And like, you can have, you can have, you've yeah. done, like, you've been on Catastrophe, Psychoville, The Katie Brown Show, That's Miranda. <laughs> You've worked with John Finnemer, you've been, worked with me. I mean, for someone who absolutely no one has heard of, I've got a great yeah. CV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember working on... I a like this more than, than any of it. Do you remember working on A Very British Cult with Richard Herring? I do, Yeah, yes. we did a film together. Yeah, we did a film. You yeah. were the star. Did a film. Well, what film's this? Short film, A Very British Cult. Now, hang on, short film <laughs> is not a fucking yeah. film. <laughs> It is for me. Oh, look at this film. It's a photograph. It's a short film. <laughs> it was an acting role in which I didn't have to play someone who was using a prostitute or wanking in a bin, and it's a film. What character did you play? I played as? a man who uh, was waiting, a leader of a cult who was waiting for the return of Jesus and then wrote down some map coordinates in Marmite and had a vision... I mean, how that then, didn't take off, I And do then not. we'll have to wait and you'll have to watch it to find out what happened next. Miranda Hart was in it. Alex McQueen. Yeah, was loads it? of people yeah. have done really I mean, well. Didn't you want to be an actor, Richard Herring? Um, I don't, that's probably not. It's hard work, isn't it? I did want to what start do when you I started want to be? off. Yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> I want to be Nicholas Parsons. Um, I don't, I don't Four know. Nearly dead. <laughs> 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 I mean, you know, at some point, someone's going to be listening to this and we'll all be dead, yeah. including them. Uh, I'm going to stop listening to podcasts uh, when I'm dead. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a real... You if you could leave them playing, if you, are, if you feel you are about to die, mm. could you just leave these playing Still on subscribe. repeat? Yeah. Yeah, subscribe yeah. and leave them playing <laughs> and downloading, because yeah, then we get a very tiny bit of advertising revenue every time it plays. <laughs> so if you don't like them, just keep leaving them playing when you're Have asleep. Have playing out of your gravestone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This dead guy was a cunt. See, there we go. <laughs> That's it. it but do you, do you want to be an actor? Um, I don't think I do anymore. When I started off, I, I did probably more than anything else, yeah. But you don't now? Um, I just think there's so many good actors. I don't think there's, there's very... I'm um, very limited things I can do okay. And it turns out to be... I remember doing that film and the director telling you to stop smiling at everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wasn't very... I was really nervous about doing that. Were you? Yeah, but I was good at, I was good at acting at, at university. And then I lost my mojo with it really and got and well I worked with people who were horrible to me and so I kind of just I thought I couldn't do it anymore Aww. yeah Aww. you had to stage kiss yeah yeah did you use his tongue um you know accidentally I had to stage oh, kiss I had to I had a stage kiss oh this is definitely accidental I had to stage kiss Emma Kennedy once and I accidentally I think in rehearsal accidentally I got over enthusiastic I didn't mean to put my tongue in but my tongue went in and I wouldn't do that with Emma Kennedy. It's like, that'd be like <laughs> sucking off your own dad in a dark room. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, I didn't, apart from that, no. But, but some, sometimes, uh, there's a girl in that play, that was at university, uh, there was a girl in that play who I really was in love with and I had to kiss her. Uh, and I asked her out. 
and she said, I've got a boyfriend. Aww. Yeah, I did have some success with women at some point. <laughs> Um, but no, but why? You have, you, you, have you had to kiss people and put your tongue in? Uh, I, I, I did a, one short film when I had to kiss a guy, yes. And you know what? I quite enjoyed it. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. Like I'd, but I'd love it now just as an excuse to kiss somebody else. Yeah, just, um, you know. My, my wonderful but wife. I find it really weird that it, it doesn't feel like anything. <laughs> it feels like a sort of sponge or something. What's <laughs> Why... Why is it a society we don't mind filming someone <laughs> kissing someone on screen? Yeah. But you, like, if you fuck someone on screen, that is <laughs> porn. Yeah, you're right. It's because of the ugliness of cocks. That's what it is. Is that what it is? Yeah. If you say that in the middle of filming a kissing scene, <laughs> <laughs> but like, that's your not way the way to go. To Why someone? is this all right? I'm not fucking. <laughs> I don't know. We should fuck each other, right? How come you're allowed to kiss someone and you're not allowed to bury them? <laughs> no, like my boyfriend slash husband um, didn't mind me kissing a man on screen, but if I'd have like, stopped my finger <laughs> <laughs> up his ass, Which he would have been annoyed. Yeah, if it hadn't been in the script, I think the guy would have probably been quite annoyed. Yeah, it, it's, you're not being Robin Williams by <laughs> improvising that on set. <laughs> Oh, I'll just slide this up here. No, it's not, it's not how you do it. <laughs> but it's just rarely part of the plot, is it? Isn't it? Well, I just mean, where's the line drawn? Why is it okay to pretend to kiss someone by actually kissing them, but you can't pretend to finger someone's ass by actually putting your finger up the arse? You're genuinely angry about this, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> just don't know why is, what is, it feels really arbitrary. <laughs> <laughs> what films have you done, Wayne? <laughs> What else have you watched up? where you've been thinking? Why are we not literally putting my finger up my ass? It's not in the script. I'm your dad. We're not even filming this. It's a very good question. I think you could... Yeah. Yeah, put it to equity. <laughs> <laughs> OK, good. Uh, good. Since your last one, you've done a lot of uh, stand-up shows. You did a stand-up... Yeah. Yeah, how's that been going? Fine, thank you. Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, how, you, you lost, your, you have a, a dog called Jerk. I did. No. And then she died. Yeah. And then, uh, but I didn't, write, but I didn't write a show about her. No, I didn't. I wrote a show that was just called Jerk. And then um, some people thought, oh no, I'm going to go and I'm going to cry the whole way through it. Went, well, you are, but not for the reasons you fucking think. <laughs> it's going to be quite a miserable thing, but it's not because of dog death. No. No, I, I wrote a uh, musical in it, though, mm -hmm. that was supposedly written by my dead dog. <laughs> it was literally the last thing she did before she died, in the same way that the last thing that David Bowie did before he died wasn't release Black Star. It was actually uh, make... Uh, he, he wrote and made a musical that was absolutely fucking awful <laughs> and no one wants to talk about it. Oh my God, it was so bad. <laughs> fucking awful. It was, uh, did you see Lazarus? No. It was at the end of the musical Lazarus, they bring up a picture of David Bowie and they sort of like go, you know, like in theatre, they do that to the tech yeah. and then they do it to the, the picture of David Bowie. <laughs> yeah. And it made me really... They should do that in all theatre shows. <laughs> Pointing. It made me yeah. slightly glad he was dead. <laughs> That's how bad Lazarus was. Yeah. Was I mean, really you wouldn't have wanted terrible. David Bowie to have seen that. <laughs> so it's good he's oh. dead. Okay. But then again, that's how I felt about my one-man show. So yeah. I wish I was dead. I'm glad my dog isn't alive to see yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> David Bowie died at a really good time, didn't he? I mean, he... Right at he the end of his life. It. Well... Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. He didn't... Um, <laughs> He didn't see Brexit, he yeah. Trump, you know. Yeah, well, we're probably, that's where, you know, that could mm. happen to all of us. Didn't see the Nazis didn't coming back. The Last yeah. Jedi. <laughs> you do sort of, do think that uh, maybe he was keeping everything all right. And, and now he's gone. What is a natural death? Uh, well, you know, when you're, an, well, it, it's, it's just the end of your life. And it's a very good question. We've been discussing this over the last few days. I mean, because um, 
Mm. I think being eaten by foxes is right. a natural death. See, that's not natural causes. <laughs> it's not natural. No, no we decided it's, it wasn't. No, no, because you see, you yeah, a heart attack is that's natural but causes. Fox, is, is it, it nature? It's nature. <laughs> <laughs> foxes yeah. are nature. If you got eaten by a fox, I think that's natural causes. All right, but put it this way: like, if you got eaten by foxes, yeah, and no, you're... just one fox. All right, one fox then. <laughs> Why blame the whole community? <laughs> <laughs> but it, it. Well, I think the fox community should all come out and stand up against it. Um, you're absolutely right. Well, just one fox, okay? One yeah. rogue, uh, lone wolf fox. It's. <laughs> 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 uh, your face off, yeah, and then your uh, husband slash boyfriend David, right? He'll go. Oh well, I'll still have an open casket funeral because she died of natural causes. Yeah. <laughs> then even fewer people are going to come to your funeral. Keep the cost of the weight down. Are you doing a show in Edinburgh in 2019? I am. I'm doing a show uh, called The Idiot at the beautiful Stand uh, Comedy Club. Uh, and it's a show about how we have a choice in life. We have a choice of being Iggy Pop or not being Iggy Pop, and how come only one person in the world has chosen the right <laughs> way? <laughs> Good. Um, and you, are you guys, guys going to be? You're not going to be Edinburgh. No podcast in Edinburgh. No podcast. No. I'm hoping. It's to the new do... thing. Podcast. You know, live podcast is the new thing. Mm. Are you going up? Yeah, I'm doing my podcast. You doing Edinburgh. for the whole month? Yeah, I'm well for 20 days. That's yeah. tiring. Not as tiring as doing a podcast and a stand-up show, which is what I always used to do. I'm just going to do the podcast. Piss easy. Makes much more sense. But you're older now. So I am older. Yeah. Just the same level. <laughs> and also, I don't have to write a show. It's a brilliant thing about well, yeah. podcasts. I was meant to be doing a play, and I uh, realised that I had no time to write it. So yeah. rather than writing it in July and then losing £50,000, yes. I just decided not to do okay, it. Okay, is that, uh, is that no, what I wasn't do? No, it wasn't a dig at you at all. <laughs> it's what I did, though. <laughs> <laughs> like the last time I was there. <laughs> did you lose £50,000 on yours? No, I no. made £20. <laughs> okay. Good. I only lost 45 so... Oh, okay, Why sorry. aren't you doing a stand-up show, Richard? Yeah. Uh, I yeah. haven't got any ideas left. Well, I also... Like, no one has. I was, just going to, I was taking some time off stand-up, and then and I was going to, I wanted to take some time off touring so I could spend some time with my beautiful children and oh. lovely wife <laughs> uh, and, uh, and give my wife a chance to uh, do live work. How uh, did you get your lovely wife? I don't know. It's, it's, it's amazing. No, she's really lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I've got an amazing penis. Which, uh, I, just, I just have to show it. We're going to have to yeah. see that. Yeah, we'll, we'll, is it really long? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Like so long that you can sort of lasso offer someone. it without even you being... You can just lasso someone. <laughs> you tie an end in it. And then... Oh, like the olden days. <laughs> like um, a sheriff. We fell in love, you know. It's, it was a wonderful thing. Uh, she does, she's up doing her podcast, Drunk Women Solving Crime, which is very good. For the whole month? Uh, for the first week or oh, so. Okay. So we're taking our family up, we're going up together, and it should be about old enough to... Well, my daughter's old enough to have fun up there. Are you renting a ridiculously expensive house? We will do. We haven't got one yet. Uh, but uh, it will be ridiculously expensive. I think the ones we've looked at so far for three bedrooms are £6,000. Jesus fucking Christ! What? That's why. That's that. That's Who the big... fuck likes their kids that much? <laughs> <laughs> no, if they like their kids more, they could all be in the same room together. That's yeah. true, mate. Four grand, I'll get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> that's two grand. That's two grand. You're saying two yeah. grand each year. That's true. Still need one room, and it would still be yeah, yeah. Uh, it's lovely. It'd be lovely though. It'd be nice to be up there. Are you looking forward to it? We could hang out, Michael. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I've got kids. I've got to go home. Um, I've just, I've just, oh, it's nearly time for your Oh, cab. is it really? Is that well? Yeah, it's gone fast, <gasps> hasn't it? Blimey. I'll just see if it's here. Because I gave them nine. Oh, they haven't texted me. Keep this in the podcast. This yeah. is yeah, good. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> this should have been the whole podcast. Yeah. Starting from, is the ca cab's on its way? And Margaret, I could ask you in turn, how did you manage to get with Dan Tetzel, <laughs> a man <gasps> married Dan I Tetzel? Know. 
know. You look at Dan Tetzel. Well, because yeah, he's, he's a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is. Margaret's had children with tiny Andrew Collins. That is the. That is. Oh, that's horrible. The, they're tiny, tiny Andrew Collins. <laughs> yes, that's what he does in, in bed. Yes, yes. <laughs> no, no. Says, Aside, I don't love you. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, those are the days. Um, <laughs> anything else you want to talk about? Um, my husband's not a Nazi, and I love Michael and Danielle very much. Oh, and I feel mean. For, uh, I had written sad jokes. nipples on my hands. Sad nipples? Never came up. No. <laughs> so. Were you trying to predict what I asked? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to say that I think you should definitely listen to Do the Right Thing if you've not listened to Do the Right Thing. It's a You'd really good panel show podcast that if you like the Radio 4 stuff then you'll like this because it's like that but us saying cunt a lot and if you don't like Radio 4 then that's great you like this because we say cunt a lot <laughs> <laughs> it is very good and, and I think it's you know don't worry about money that will, money will come if you just, if you just dream long enough about oh. money's no but if you have money you'll just have to spend it on an expensive flat in Edinburgh that's what will happen so <laughs> don't do that just live in a tent in Edinburgh and think, save myself six grand. I've earned six grand this year. Six grand, that is for one month. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Depressing, isn't it? Not for the person who owns that fucking flat, it isn't. <laughs> Happy days for them. I would fuck every electrical appliance in that house. I'd get my six grand's worth. <laughs> <laughs> I'd spunk everywhere. Do you know what? It's genuinely, like, when I was younger, after the age of 22, I would occasionally, uh, as I think we all have done, sleep with someone so you had somewhere to spend the night. <laughs> you do that. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. or at least give them a tickle. Um, <laughs> now I'm thinking, you did that for the whole month. You are saving a lot of money. Yeah. Probably more than you don't being an actual prostitute. True, Slash but sex worker. on the other hand, I can walk around Edinburgh looking for people who haven't got anywhere to stay and they can come <laughs> stay at my house. <laughs> and then they have to have sex with me. Oh, my wife's there, damn it. Oh, oh, oh. It was a really good plan otherwise. <laughs> it's really, I just had it in that moment. I thought, yeah. this is going to be the best Edinburgh. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have that? Do you have those <laughs> flickers of, of remembering what it was like to be single? Yes. Because I, I, That's I, I do I this all I think about. <laughs> You'll have a flicker on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> no, just every now and then I'll think about trying to pull yeah, yeah. someone I mean, and Christ, then remember. Oh, it no, was all, been... I mean, it's kind of awful and I can't imagine, I just can't imagine how you did it. You know, I just can't imagine how you just kissed someone. It's so weird, like a stranger. It's so, such a weird thing to do. And they go, yeah, I wouldn't know what to do and I generally wouldn't know how to do it. I think if my... You give it a go. I would give it, absolutely give it. If my yeah. wife sadly died, I haven't really thought about or it. Or joyously uh, died. <laughs> yeah. That's a blessed yeah. relief for Imagine her. Imagine she just <laughs> celebratorily died. <laughs> it's phenomenal. <laughs> Eventually someone we talk about dying is going to die and then this is it's going to take on a whole different thing. This is going to be a very sad podcast. Yeah, that's all right. But we're happy at this moment. Oh, it's going to be me, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> And then we'll get Dan Tetzel on to talk about how he kisses someone now. Yeah. <laughs> could you leave a message? If it is you, could you leave a message for Dan saying how you're happy for him to find his new partner? Oh, no, Just I've so he's got him. that. Yeah. I've told him that okay. already. Right, yeah, good. yeah. You're I'm, happy I'm for him. your wedding too. vows. <laughs> <laughs> Move on. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> I do. Oh, wow. That's quick. Oh dear. Well, look, let's. Uh, you're right. Listen to Do the Right Thing. Yeah. Uh, we can get Danielle in her cab if it's turned up. If it's yeah, not, I hope you get, so. you can, I'll get you a tube ticket. Woo! 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 Mr. If not, Big you shots. can come and stay at my house. <laughs> 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 I've Let got to go see. get my taxi. Bye. Going in a taxi. It's not, it's not here, but go and, go and enjoy it. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, do the right thing! <laughs>
How do you like them Sky potatoes? <laughs> 